All right. Hey, my friends, and welcome to this episode where we're going to continue our series on intrusive thoughts and talk about harmful intrusive thoughts and um, and really kind of what they are um, and, and how you go about overcoming them if they're really causing a detriment or, or really impact, uh, serious impact on your life. So for those of you that don't know me, my name is Matt. And I'm the founder of Restored Minds and the creator of the AAA Response. And uh, this is part of our series on intrusive thoughts. Now, I have taken a little bit of a break for a few weeks, um, so I'm glad to be back. I just wanted to let everyone know that my wife and I, uh, over the last few weeks, welcomed our new baby, James Wyatt, into our family. And so everyone's doing great. And so I've just been, uh, you know, just really intentionally taking some time to just be with my family and... um, and just kind of, you know, just, just be with, with James and my wife and our daughter uh, through this time. So, um, but, you know, back in action today and uh, excited to be back. So let's talk about harmful intrusive thoughts. Um, really, in, in the scope of intrusive thoughts, you know, really what we're, what we're talking about here are people that are experiencing these automatic thoughts that pop up into their awareness. And are generally very uh, dis- discomforting, distressing. They don't want to experience them and they can take on a variety of forms. One of which being intrusive harmful thoughts. And in the following episodes, we're gonna talk about intrusive, se- intrusive sexual thoughts, intrusive religious thoughts, and how these actually can all kind of emerge where you can have like intrusive sexual thoughts or intrusive harmful thoughts about religious figures and so on and so forth, right? So they can all kind of really merge together. But basically it's just the mind uh, you know, uh, mind's ability to create kind of the most inappropriate content that you can imagine, right? That's really what an, an intrusive thoughts are. So let's go ahead and talk about when something's a harmful intrusive thought and when something is needs to be taken more seriously uh, as a potential threat, right? Because the main question I get with intrusive, harmful intrusive thoughts is like, hey, well, how do I know that you know, I'm, I'm not a danger to loved ones, to myself, you know, all of that. How do I know this is just intrusive thoughts? And it really comes back down to the energetic experience or the emotional experience underneath the actual thoughts. So when, in, when a harmful intrusive thoughts pops up, and it might be an intrusive harmful thought towards a loved one, towards an animal, towards yourself, you know, um, and, and it can take on a, all sorts of various formats, when those thoughts pop up, it's it's really about the energy and the emotional experience that the person is having in conjunction with the thought that's an indication on what's going on. So <clears throat> someone who experiences an intrusive thought and they're, you know, panic driven, you know, a bunch of fear, the energy associated in with that thought is fear, right? Um that that's how we're able to categorize it in the realm of OCD and anxiety. So a lot of people will say, well, like, you know, you know, how do you know that I'm not really a serial killer or, um, you know, that I'm not going to do something like I saw on the news or all these other things. And the answer is, is because when it's, when it's associated with fear, like the, the direct emotion, the, the dominant emotion that you're experiencing with these thoughts is fear that is an indication that these thoughts are are ego dystonic, right? They're not something that you want to do. Now, if the thoughts are more associated with like desire or like rage or anger and the person doesn't have a problem with having the thoughts or they actually feel like these are things that I want to do, that's when these are separate into a different category here of not intrusive thoughts, Right. So I want to be very clear. We're talking about the former, not the latter. And this is when um, so that's that's one of the ways that we're first dis- like becoming, uh, you know, h- helping someone to distinct what what they are actually experiencing is intrusive thoughts. Now, um, you know, the tricky part about intrusive thoughts, especially like harmful, harmful intrusive thoughts or sexual intrusive thoughts is a lot of times people get bad guidance. Right. And they'll go to someone and say, hey, I'm having these particular thoughts and that the person's not doesn't understand OCD, doesn't understand anxiety, doesn't understand intrusive thoughts, a lot of times that person will just take the thought at face value and react to that. And that's why um, you really want to make sure you're talking to someone who understands what you're experiencing because you don't want to get the wrong guidance and the wrong intervention. Um, 
in on the flip side of that coin, if someone is having actual like harmful ideation uh, or, you know, suicidal, like true suicidal ideation, they want to get the appropriate help and not be treated for intrusive thoughts. Right. So this is why we need to make sure we're we know what we're dealing with. And it really comes back down to the in that dominant emotional or energetic experience that the person experiences in conjunction with the thoughts they're having. So with harmful intrusive thoughts, the person is having these general ideations of what if I do X, Y, Z, what if I harm someone? Um, usually it's future oriented. Uh, a lot of times there's a lot of fear on touching things that could be weapons or weapons, right? Knives, um, stuff like that. Watching kind of any movies or shows that have violent imagery can be very triggering. And the thoughts are almost always directed towards people in their life or themselves, right? So it's what if I hurt myself? What if I hurt my mom, my dad, my brother, my sister, my dog, my boss, uh, even just walking down the street? What if I, you know, what if I'm just walking and I just jump kick this woman in front of me, right? You know, it's like, it might be thoughts like that popping up. So it doesn't always need to be like loved ones. It can just be kind of happening, right? But the thoughts are something the person experiences and recognizes like, I don't want to do this. This is not something I desire. This is not a reflection of who I am. And the thoughts are very distressing because they're not in alignment with the true desires in, in, um, you know, of the individual, right? That's why they are intrusive. So now that we kind of had that discussion, let's talk about, okay, well, what do we do with intrusive thoughts? And the number one thing, and this is you know, this is challenging initially for a lot of people is we need to not, we need to not catastrophize or think that your specific intrusive thoughts are any worse or any different than any other type of intrusive thoughts or OCD for that matter. A lot of times what happens is people uh, get into this idea that what they're experiencing is, is more difficult to treat or to intervene on than other forms of this experience. So someone, you know, I, I can't tell you how many times I've had people with intrusive thoughts come to me and say, you know, well, I just wish I had contamination fears because I would, those would be much easier for me. And I would have people with contamination fears say the same thing about intrusive thoughts because it's not really, it's not really about, no, nothing's easier than the other. It's because they're, the reason that this is so, uh, disruptive and distressing is because of the corresponding energy and fear that's going on with thoughts. So it's never taking the thoughts at face value, never taking the thoughts as the problem. Like I talked about in, in the earlier parts of this um, series, right? We don't, the thoughts are never the problem. The content of the thought is never the problem. We're never solving that. We're solving the loop itself of fear. And the loop is composed of these four components. You have the thoughts, the sensations, the behavior, and the relief. And if you're doing anything that's causing you to get relief, then you're reinforcing that the thoughts are valid or dangerous, and therefore you're going to keep experiencing them. So once you understand harmful intrusive thoughts in the sense of the wheel or the loop, what we have to do is we have to understand the behaviors you're engaging in that are reinforcing this loop. And so that are causing you the, the, the safety behaviors that are giving you that temporary relief. And so this can be things like, again, ruminating, analyzing, thought blocking, thought replacing, thought suppressing. Uh, it could be praying, it could be avoiding certain content, right? Avoid Avoiding shows, avoiding movies, avoiding knives, avoiding um, being in proximity to certain people. You know, so like I've had moms that are just like, I, I need to be away from my children. And while that may make you feel better temporarily, notice over the long term, like that's damaging your relationship with your children. And this is why when it comes to OCD and anxiety uh, and, and intervening on this, what we always want to prioritize is our long term recovery, never our short term, our short, short term feelings. So with harmful intrusive thoughts. It's really first understanding the idea of the ego, ego dystonic, ego syntonic, um, and then understanding the dominant energy that's experiencing with the thoughts. And then really, again, not trying to treat the thoughts themselves, but we want to make sure we're actually 
breaking the wheel. So actually teaching the person what to do with the underlying emotion, how to actually confront that emotion, go through that emotion, release the emotion. Because when we, re when we release all the energy of the thought, the thought is merely a thought. What, what's really actually challenging for people is the amount of energy and fear they're experiencing simultaneously with a thought. And so once we work at it from that perspective, we can really take away a lot of the power of that loop. And then we also need to make sure we're not engaging in any compulsions, which is, you know, really the premise of what exposure and response prevention is. So, um, so yeah, I just wanted to kind of cover a, a 30,000 foot view of harmful intrusive thoughts, explain that. Now, if you're looking for help with this, um, I'll link down into the uh, notes. I have a workshop we did on overcoming intrusive thoughts. Um, we'll give you a little discount link on, in the in the notes, so you're welcome to go check that out. It will uh, it was like a three hour workshop that I did, and it was um, it, it really helped. It will help you understand this, and we go into the more specific thoughts as well in the training. So um, with that, hope this helps. And if you found this helpful and you are benefiting from this content, please help us out by liking, subscribing, and leaving a review on iTunes or Spotify. And with that, um, I look forward to seeing you on the next episode in the series where we're going to keep talking about different intrusive thoughts. Hey there. So if you enjoyed that video, we've linked up a few more videos that we think you'd find helpful as well. And if you have found this helpful, we'd really appreciate your support by liking and subscribing. And if you're looking for help and guidance, please check out restoredminds.com as we have several options for you to get started. See you guys soon.